Hello guys, how's it going? In today's video we have many, many tropical systems to talk about in this very hyperactive hurricane season. Alright, now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you guys think that Tropical Storm Sally will stay a Tropical Storm, become a Category 1, 2, or even more? What do you think is going to happen with Tropical Storm Sally? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see, we have the 10% area there in the Gulf of Mexico. We have Tropical Storm Sally racing towards the Gulf Coast. We have Hurricane Paulette there in the middle of the Atlantic about to impact Bermuda. We have tr Tropical Depression Rene there that's about to dissipate. We have Tropical Depression 20 that's about to develop further. And then we have a 60% chance there just offshore of Africa. Now let's start getting into some of these five-day outlooks. First off, the Gulf system, we have a 20% chance of development heading almost directly south. Not expecting much to happen with that one. We have one that is not moved offshore of Africa yet that will be, that has a 20% chance over the next five days. We then have a second African system there that is over Cape Verde, and that one has a 70% chance moving forward of development. We should be talking about a tropical depression and possibly a tropical storm later on for that one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the cone forecast for tropical depression Rene, Hurricane Paulette, tropical depression 20, and tropical storm Sally. Now, the reason I wanted to show the cone forecast here for Tropical Depression, Renee, is because I'm not going to talk about this system any further. It's going to dissipate over the next couple of days and then be pretty much done for. So I just wanted to show this, this is our farewell to Tropical Depression, Renee. Uh, now, here is Hurricane Paulette expected to remain a hurricane and hit Bermuda as possibly a Category 2. Again, I anticipate major impacts there for Bermuda. So if you are located in Bermuda, I highly Recommend you stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest life-saving information there. They're going to have things like storm surge, total rainfall, total winds. All of the impacts you need to know about are going to be located in the National Hurricane Center's website. So I highly recommend you stay tuned to them for the latest updated life-saving information. And look, this one remains a hurricane all the way through 2 a.m. Friday and possibly beyond that. So we're going to need to watch this one closely for potential European impacts moving forward. All right, now here is that Tropical Depression 20, which is expected to be a tropical storm by 2 a.m. on Monday and potentially a hurricane by 2 a.m. on, or sorry, 2 p.m. on maybe Tuesday there. So very, very shortly, we'll be talking about a hurricane with this one potentially. And this one looks to have possibly, unfortunately, Bermuda in its crosshairs. We're going to need to watch that closely. East Coast, you're not out of the water yet for that one as well. Here's Tropical Storm Sally, which now is anticipated to become a hurricane by about 2 p.m. on Monday and then race towards potentially Louisiana or Mississippi, where there is hurricane warnings already up, potentially hurricane watches, and even some tropical storm warnings as well. All of these warnings are warranted because we're expecting major impacts from tropical storm and eventually potentially hurricane Sally. I'll be talking about that in actually just a moment. We'll be talking about the impacts there. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the total rainfall for tropical storm Sally. The total winds, the uh, arrival time of winds, even the storm surge for Tropical Storm and eventually Hurricane Sally. All right, now here we are taking a look at the total rainfall for Tropical Storm Sally. As you can see, if you're in the greens, the darks or the light greens, you're expected to be at anywhere from one to four inches of rain, which is what I would consider minor to moderate amounts of rainfall, depending on what your area is like. Some are more susceptible to flooding than others, so that's why that would depend. If you're in the orange shade, you're in about six to ten inches of rain, which is, you know, bordering on now moderate to major amounts of rain. Then the reds, which is clearly major rainfall. Uh, we see 10 to 15 inches of rain, even some pinks kind of sprinkled in there that's where you're expecting to see 15 to 20 inches of rain none of that is on shore yet but i expect that potentially that could eventually uh, be anticipated for the coasts of alabama mississippi potentially the panhandle of florida there now let's go ahead and take a look at the expected arrival time of these tropical storm force winds and there could be some hurricane force winds obviously but we don't have a map like this for that uh, but let's 
take a look, you can see the percentages down there on the bottom right. So if you're in the reds and purples, you have a 70 to 100% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. If you're in the greens, it's not very likely at this point that you will. And then the golds is kind of 50-50. Uh, so right now, Louisiana, Mississippi, that's kind of the most likely area to actually see these tropical storm force winds. And the expected time is in those black lines within there. You can see Monday at about 8 p.m. is when a lot of the land starts to see those uh, tropical storm force winds uh, begin, and that's the most likely arrival time of that. But if you're in somewhere else, you can take a look at all those times there. Uh, I highly recommend you check out this tab on the National Hurricane Center's website. And just real quick, here's the storm surge. We're expecting one to three feet, very widespread, but it's really these four to seven feet storm surge amounts from Mississippi all the way to portions of Louisiana, and then the seven to 11 feet storm surge there uh, for some other areas in Louisiana. That's devastating storm surge for some areas. So we're going to want to watch this closely. This is kind of reminding me of Laura type storm surge. It's not quite that high, but it's actually uh, getting quite close at this point, which is very, very concerning here. So again, you're going to want to stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center's website because this is very, very good resources that they have available to the public there on that website. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for each of these storms, as well as the spaghetti and intensity models. Now, I apologize if I'm moving very quickly, but it's because I have many, many frames to go over in this video. And I don't like to go too far over, you know, 12, 13 minutes, because then I feel like people don't get that useful information. I don't feel like a lot of people wait that long to get that information. So I'm trying to get it all out very, very quickly for you guys here, just so the most amount of people can get this information, obviously. So here's our satellite imagery for Paulette. And look, this storm looks very good. We have an eye there. Uh, and it's heading towards Bermuda. You can see Bermuda actually there on the top left-hand corner of the screen. This storm is going to be a pretty strong one. No, again, like I said in the last video, nothing you guys aren't used to. But again, still major impacts. You're going to want to take this one quite seriously. Uh, it's looking to potentially be a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. Speaking of the intensity, let's go ahead and just look at that model intensity guidance. And as you can see, we're at a very weak Category 1, which there's no such thing as a weak Category 1. But it's on the weaker side of that spectrum. All of these models, pretty much, except for maybe one or two, expect this one to at least become a Category 2, approaching Category 3, where we see a few actually take this one to Category 3. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Category 3 out of this one with it developing an eye this early on. I think it's very, very possible. I'm not necessarily expecting it, but I think that there's probably a good 20 or 30% chance that we do see that Category 3 status. There's an equal amount of chance that we just stay in Category uh, 1, and then the majority of the percentage there is going to be that we actually or in, somewhere in this Category 2 spectrum, I would say. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our Tropical Depression 20. And as you can see on satellite imagery, it's not looking too impressive. Basically just some scattered thunderstorms there. Uh, but this one does look to eventually get its act together. Uh, so let's look at the spaghetti models first off. And as you can see, it's expected to curve north, which is really good news for land. Because, well, this way it has way less chance of having uh, any land interaction. And look... This is very, very good news unless it hits Bermuda, but I think there's a good chance it's going to dodge Bermuda as well. This one could potentially become a major hurricane, so it's really good news to know that it might be a fish storm. Uh, that's very, very promising. All right, now real quickly, here's the intensity guidance here, and as you can see, within the next 12 hours, I would say there's a 60 to 70% chance we see this one become a tropical storm, which is surprising, and that's only based on the model intensity gui guidance, but looking at satellite imagery, I think it might be a little bit longer, might even take 24 hours. We'll have to wait and see. This one could really, really get its act together, though. Um, we could see a tropical storm again within the next 12 hours, but I think it's more likely that it's closer to uh, maybe tonight, tomorrow morning time frame, just based on satellite imagery alone. We could be talking about a Category 1 hurricane, 50-50 chance that within the next 48 hours or 60 hours, we'll be talking about a Category 1 already, uh, which is, again, just very surprising. Uh, and then a lot of these models, you can see there's almost two groups of models here. Some of them keep it much weaker, and then a, a majority of them have it actually intensifying quite quickly and becoming Category 2 or 3 status, uh, which would obviously be interesting. Really, no land interaction. Um, so it doesn't really matter what this one does unless it's heading towards Bermuda, which there's that chance. So we really hope this one stays weaker, but, um, there's again, just two groups of models here. We're going to want to watch and see which ones are right. I know that HWFI model has been doing very good this, this year as well as the HMNI, 
model. Those ones are, th I think, are related, but they do quite well, actually, uh, especially on the track. Maybe not as much the intensity, but definitely the track they've done quite well. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at Tropical Storm Sally, probably what most of you are watching this video for. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, ensemble models, and intensity guidance, and then close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that satellite imagery, and as you can see, this one's actually looking quite nice. Again, yesterday I kind of called for it to become a tropical storm a little bit earlier than anticipated, and that's for the most part occurred. Uh, based on satellite imagery alone, that's how I was able to estimate that, and based on satellite imagery alone once more, I'm going to go out and say that I think this one could become a hurricane sooner uh, than anticipated as well. With the way it looks right now, very, very tall clouds, looks like it has a nice structure to it. I think this one could be a hurricane within the next... Uh, 24 hours. So uh, it's looking quite intense. And I think this one could be a category two or three. I had somebody comment and they were like, this one kind of reminds me, this is I'm quoting them, they said this one kind of reminds me of Lara because of just its track, its location, obviously, it's tracking a little bit further eastward as of right now, it appears it will. Uh, but unfortunately, with these Gulf storms, they can really just pick up in intensity just very quickly. So I'm not going to say this one can only be a category one or two. I never want to say that again. I said that with Michael when I was much younger, maybe th I think that was three years ago, four years ago. And I'm never going to say that again with a golf system for my entire life. I'm making that pledge to myself because uh, it's gone so wrong for me whenever I've done that. These storms in the Gulf just really uh, have no limits. I've, I've learned that. We saw it with Laura. We saw it with Michael. These ones can you know, go up in three or four categories in 24 hours. So this one definitely could become a major hurricane, and I don't want to downplay it at all. Uh, but at the same time, it could just stay a strong tropical storm category one. There's equal chances there. Uh, well, it's a much larger chance, obviously, that it stays category one or two. Uh, but I'm, I, again, I just don't want to limit it to the, the fact that it could only be a category one or two. This one could certainly become a category three or four and surprise all of us. We saw Lara do it. That means this one can as well. Uh, but I'm certainly expecting somewhere around a Category 2, I think, or a stronger Category 1 at landfall. That's my uh, that's my call right now. I will be updating this tomorrow morning, obviously. So here's the, after looking at the satellite imagery, here's our spaghetti model guidance. And the alarming thing here for me is we're 48 hours approximately away from landfall. And we see multiple models going way off of the expected track. Within 48 or 72 hours, this is extremely alarming because... We are expecting a hurricane in Louisiana, but what if this one hits the panhandle of Florida like four of these models are showing? They're not expecting a hurricane right now. So for me, that's extremely alarming because if, again, especially if this one becomes much stronger than anticipated, like a category two or three, and then it's hitting somewhere, you know, 100, 200 miles away from the expected uh, landfall area, that's very alarming to see these models spread out. And I think there should be great awareness throughout the weather community. I think the mainstream media should be uh, telling everybody about the fact that these models are really showing a very large cone. I think the National Hurricane Center is doing an excellent job by having a very wide cone, but some people don't understand that the cone actually means the landfall area could be anywhere within that. I think a lot of people think that's just where the impacts could be, uh, but that really means that anywhere within that cone is where the low pressure center could uh, be when it when it reaches that location. So very alarming here. And let's take a look at this uh, ensemble models, and it's even more alarming here for me. Uh, especially because we don't really see that Florida panhandle uh, impact potential, but we do see many of these showing a coastal Texas, even uh, possibly Houston or further south impact. Again, certainly not expecting it there. The only good news there is that we would have a lot of time to anticipate that, uh, whereas if it hits you know, Alabama or the Florida panhandle, that's going to be within the next 48 hours. Uh, absolutely no warning of that happening at all. Here, quickly, let's take a look at the intensity guidance. And this is the only promising thing is, as of right now, these models have kind of backed down a little bit because uh, originally they were showing a lot of Category 2 or 3 potential. Uh, it's really backed down to mostly Category 1 or even strong tropical storm, kind of like what I was saying earlier. But again, with Laura, they weren't saying Category 4 or, you know, even close to 5, and that happened. So these models can be very, very far off. And I don't want this to make you think that it's impossible for that to happen because it certainly is, especially with the Gulf of Mexico. Again, from my personal experience, which as a forecaster, you're going to learn if there's any younger viewers here watching uh, that do want to end up forecasting the weather. Your experience is going to be your number one tool to use in these types of situations. 
Uh, so again, my, my experience with Michael and Laura has taught me that I don't want to underestimate these golf systems, which is very useful for me uh, and also in the future. Now, anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that Laura will go down as the most major hurricane this year, or do you think we will have any that top it? And Jaden's Fun World said, I think Laura will stay the most major. And I have to agree, honestly, and I really, I think this might be uh, me just hoping this is what happens, uh, just because I don't really want to see any more major storms, especially not more major than Laura, which was a devastating storm. Uh, so let's all just hope that Laura goes down as the most major one. Anyway, for today's patron highlights of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Madbirds. Alicia Davis, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum Patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, stay tuned to the latest life-saving information uh, from the National Hurricane Center. Be sure to seek official guidance from them. They are the professionals and they have great, great resources, more than I could ever show uh, in one of my videos. So I highly recommend that that's where you go for, again, uh, seeking official guidance. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.